Okay, we're going to work today on strokes. Um, stroke works kind of the basis for decorative painting and although you don't always do stroke designs just knowing the basic strokes that are involved and practicing them once in a while you know it really leads to better brush controls that you can use through out your decorative painting just for base coating or adding embellishments anything that you do with decorative painting if you know the basics and these basic brush strokes uh, you can get things done much more quickly and your work will look much more professional. The brush stroke that we usually start with is called a, a comma stroke and it's pretty much what it says it is and you know you can do make comma strokes with a variety of brushes and I would suggest that you practice with different types of brushes to get a similar effect. And ones that you typically use are would be a round brush and I've got some different sizes of round brushes here from a, a size 2, a 4, a 10 um, and you can vary the size that you use depending on the size of stroke that you need and you can also do comma strokes with liner brushes. Um, filberts work well for comma strokes and I've even done comma strokes with flat brushes. So like I said, it, it, you know, it's good to practice with a variety of brushes to, again, it gives you that brush control that you can use in other areas of your painting. The next thing to start out with is paint. And you want nice fresh puddles of paint. If your paint's kind of thick and gloppy, you're not going to get very pretty strokes. You also need brushes that are in good condition. You don't want brushes that are all um, out of shape or split and spreading. You need brushes that come to a nice chisel point or a nice pointed round brush to get good ends on your comma strokes. So let's start out with just um, a round brush. We'll try this number four here. And I've put out several colors on my palette from a white and different shades of pinky red colors from a lighter to a darker. And the first brush stroke we're going to do is just a basic one color brush stroke. I like to wet my brush first. So I've got a tub of water here. And let's go into this red because that will show up. So I'm just souping some of that water into the side of my puddle so that paint is nice and creamy. And you want to load your brush well with paint. You, you're not going to get a good stroke if you just have a little dab of paint on the very tip. And I use just plain, plain white paper to practice. And the basic comma stroke we'll do is a straight one. And you're going to take that loaded brush and you're going to set it down on your paper and push down with some pressure so that spreads on a nice rounded tip and you're going to pull and lift up to a point as you pull. You'll learn to do this much more quickly, but it's push, pull, and lift. And I, it's been a while since I've practiced my strokes, so you know this is something that's good to do every once in a while just to, as a refresher. So just keep making a variety of those strokes on your paper till you you want a nice rounded tip and come down to a nice little pointed tail. And you'll see as I'm starting to run out of paint, my brush is going to start separating. So I add a little bit more water, some more paint, and, and you can also kind of sometimes roll your brush a little bit as you pull up. Just I'm rolling it between my fingers here to make sure that tip of the brush comes back to a nice point. It helps if you aren't too shaky and have had your morning coffee also. I probably had a little too much caffeine today. Now once you, you know, you get comfortable with a straight stroke, actually I find the curved strokes better. So I can, instead of pulling straight down, I can lay my brush to the side at a little bit of an angle and pull and arch it 
and I think these are much more easier to do than a straight. Again, I'm starting to run out of paint, so my edges are getting a little bit fuzzy. And then you'll want to continue practicing those and then practice the opposite direction. You want to be able to pull in either direction, and one, one side's going to be easier than the other for you. Again, more paint. Keep refreshing that paint in your brush. You can see it's much more easier if you have a nice, fresh load of paint. Now, if you want smaller comma strokes, we could go to a, a smaller brush. You know, for instance, this little, well, this is a little script liner. That is a 10 aught. But you, again, you can do your comma strokes with those. You'll just get a finer, finer stroke. And we'll do our straight ones. And we'll pull some in the opposite direction. And you can make all kinds of pretty little borders and things on your, on your work. If you just learn these basic straight left and right comma strokes, for instance, you could do a, a little scrolled border where you just reverse those strokes. Curve one down and curve the next one up. And you can see how that makes such a pretty little border. Now I've also used um, the filbert brushes because they already have that nice curved in to give you that that rounded in. But you you do have to pull and lift on twist and lift on those. because you have to, to come up to that chisel, chisel edge. And you can pull it either direction. These would give you a nice big fat comma strokes. So they're single color strokes. Now a lot of times you'll see paintings that are done in variegated colors. We'll get rid of that piece of paper and start fresh. And say you wanted to add some shading or highlighting right as you were working. You could maybe load some white in your brush first and then just tip the corner in some of that red. And then when you make your stroke, you'll get a nice variation of color. So we're loading first in white, just hitting the corner in that puddle of red paint and bringing it down and pulling. So we've got white on this edge to red over on that side and some variation in between. Now if you don't like double loading brushes, you can always paint your strokes in one color and go back with a, a little flat brush and side load a highlight on one side. But if you can learn how to double load, it'll get the job done much more quickly. So say we'll go into this, I think it's pink sh peach sherbet, but it looks like a flesh color. Pick up some pink melon color Those are very close together, so you're not going to see a big variation. But it just gives you a little, little edge of color on that side. Here, if we add some red, we can get some, some more vari variation. And it doesn't necessarily have to be on the side. You can just have some variegated strokes. And a lot of times I'll jump back and forth and pick them up and get a variety of colors. I think that adds more interest to your painting when you have some variation in the color that it's not just a flat 
one colored item. I said you can also do these with a little flat brush, so I was looking for it. This is a number eight flat. So again, I, I wet my brush, mix some paint into it, and on, when I'm using a flat brush, I'll kind of push down on the edge so I'm not coming with a flat edge. See, if you, if you do that, although that's a different type of comma stroke, you can have a, a flat edge if you want to, but if you push down on the end and then lift to the thing, you get a little more rounded edge. Pick up two colors. I'll pick up some white on this one. Here's a little project I've done that's done mostly in stroke work. We've got a stenciled word, but then I've done a lot of flowers and things and birds that are all embellished with comma strokes. So you can see these these ball flowers here have comma strokes all around. Some of the leaves are comma strokes that have been stroked in one color and then I've stroked a second comma stroke over top in a, a different color. The heart down here has some comma stroke embellishment around it. So you, you have lots of uses for comma strokes. If we go back to one of these that we've started, I can show you the over overstroke. Here we'll go with our red ones because they were a little deeper in color. They'll show up better. But say for instance this red one. If I wanted to add a little more interest to that I could maybe take some pink and a little bit of white and use a smaller brush and not push so hard and add a stroke in the middle of that one. And you can see where that just adds a little bit more detail to it. Maybe I just want white in it. I can stroke that white. So you can see how you can layer your comma strokes to add more interest. Even on these big ones, you could you could fit a couple comma strokes in those. Say we take one of those big ones and add it two little ones in the center. you're adding multiple comma strokes over top of each other or next to each other, it's good to vary the size of them. So you'll see these one on top I've done a little longer and the one below it stepped it back just a little bit and it's much more graceful looking. If we wanted to do some in here we could come down the center with a tall one and add a couple little short ones on either side. So there's all kinds of little embellishments you can do just using your comma strokes and pairing them in different ways to make borders or flowers and layering colors to create more interest. So I you know, really urge you to practice these and see how you can add them to your work. Another stroke that's used a lot in decorative painting is called the S stroke. And typically you would use a flat brush or a dagger brush also works well. A dagger brush is one of these that has a long filament and it, it's sort of more, it's sort of like an angular brush but it, it's a much longer angle. And these are good for, I think sign painters and stuff use them for lettering but they also make, make good, really pretty S strokes. And let's just start with a little flat brush to give you an idea of what an S-stroke is. And with an S-stroke, you're going to, again, load your brush. You want your paint fresh and fluid, so I'm adding a little water to it so it comes off my brush really easily. And on an S-stroke, it's, it's pretty much what it says, but you're going to start up on the ch chisel edge of your brush. Let's see if I can pull this way a little bit so I'm sure the camera sees it and you're going to slide that chisel edge to the left and press down and lift up and curve it around so you're forming this S. So you're going chisel edge, pressing down, lifting 
and coming back to your chisel edge. Sometimes it's a little easier if you do it a little faster than I'm, as I'm trying to hold it in position and explain it as I go along. So you chisel edge, slide down to the right, and then back up to the left on the chisel edge. And you can vary the size of these and again, they work really well in combinations to make scrolls and things. And again, the same as the comma strokes, you can layer your colors. So let's take the red, maybe we'll pick up some pink on here. I'll just touch them on my palette to blend them a little bit and then we'll, I'm going to flip the brush so the red's at the bottom and we'll slide, turn, and slide. And so there, it's probably not as obvious on this white paper, but we've got a variation from red to the pinks back to the red as the, the color of paint. Up here, it's similar, but the white background of our paper is showing through. But if you were doing this on a colored background, you would get more the effect of the multiple colors. Let's try some of this fleshy color. That probably shows up a little better than the pinks do. So a way that you could use these little scrolls would be to do them horizontally. If you They'd make a real pretty ribbon border. Just continuously run them across your page. And that's an S stroke. I also use them for leaves. Um, I probably should use some green, but we'll just do this one. And we'll say this is a leaf. So say we've painted our flower, we've added a leaf there. And then later I can go back with a pick a darker color. I'll add some green out here on the palette. I could then take my liner brush and do outlining to detail that leaf a little more. So to make it look more like a leaf I could run a some little curly edges to it to give it more of a leaf shape or the suggestion of a leaf shape. So I put some greens out on my palette. We'll try the dagger knife. I'm sorry, the dagger brush to um, do some leaves. So we'll add some of this celery green. And we could tip it in some of the olive green. And on the dagger brush, again, you're going to start up on the chisel edge and slide down and back up on the chisel edge. And again, that, that makes a really nice, graceful S shape. So if you had, say, a stem of a flower, you could create your leaves next to it. And then come back and embellish it with some outlining. We wanted to add a little dark to our tulip center stem and just make that leaf a little more curly. We can add some detailed outlining around it. And you can go back again and add some little just line work into it. But you can see how quickly you could paint some flower leaves if you just know that little basic S stroke. Now another stroke is similar to the S stroke, but it's called a C stroke. 
And on the C stroke, you again usually start with a, some type of chisel edge brush, a, a flat usually works the best. And you're going to start up on the chisel edge of the brush, pull to the side and press down and then come back up on the chisel edge. So there you've got a C. And practice that in both directions. If you're going to do it up and down, you're going to make more of a a U shape. And again, the same thing. You can double load your brush if you want some variations in color. And you can use that for all types of things. We'll go back to our little project that we were, I was showing you, and you can see our S strokes are these these leaves here, these big leaves, or some up, some here that are S strokes that I've added little detailed line work to. I've you know outlined. I've added some little floats of other colors to accent them. So you can do a lot with the C. I'm sorry, the S strokes. Now a place where we've used the C stroke is, for instance, this flower center. We did a big C stroke that kind of came around the edge of that center ball flower, and then that was accented with some dots and outlining. And we did some kind of a combination of C or S on the sides of the heart to frame in that heart and add some shading. Again, on this on the C strokes on the um, heart, you can either double load your brush with a light and dark, or you can put down one color and then go back and float a darker edge around it to shade it. Now other strokes that we've used on this little project are these little scrolly strokes, or line work. We've done line work on the scrolls, we've done line work on the cross hatching. So it's good to learn some control on your liner brush. I like to use um, usually a 10 or 20 aught liner. And again, you want your paint very inky because your strokes are always going to come off your brush more easily if your paint flows like ink. So you want to thin it down with a little water, especially for thin line work. And on these, you're going to work up on the tip of your brush. And so if we wanted to do a scroll, trying to do this at an angle so you can see it on the camera, but still, so I'm going to touch down and just start winding that around. And you'll want to practice those in different directions. Keepers moving. Now something like this, you can see the way I did it, that would that would be some way you could make a a quick little folk arty tulip. We put a center petal in here, con continue these edges on around to the ball of the flower. You end up with like a tulip shape. You can also do little scrolls. a pattern to create little borders. Let's make that one a little bit more. So it's really fun to put these together in different little patterns. And some, you know, it's not saying that you always have to do it in one stroke. Sometimes I'll come back and touch mine up. 
but it's really good if you can learn to do it in. So just practice some spirals. Those make really cute little little ball flowers. We could even use the little spirals for leaves. Or you could use something like this if you were base coating. Say we base coated a, a circle. Just Fill that in real quick. And we wanted to make that into a cute little flower and add a little more detail. We could go over that. It's running out of paint on my brush and give you a little like cinnamon roll shape. But that could be a little folk arty flower. Like a simple rose. And go back and add your liner work. Let's combine this with some Maybe some little S strokes for leaves. Sometimes it helps to turn your piece to make it easier to pull in a direct direction that's comfortable for you. So there we have a cute little folk arty flower with leaves. We could Add some little liner work to that to give it some more interest. So you can see how fast you can start combining your strokes to create some simple little folk art decorations or borders or flowers. It's really good for filler things. So the other thing I was going to show you was cross hatching. So we had done this little shape here in a flower, like a tulip flower, and say, say you wanted to do some cross hatching here. I'm using again a 10 aught liner and inky paint. And I'm just gonna do this little pinstripes at a diagonal. Work right up on the tip of your brush Try to space them an even distance apart. They don't have to be exact, but you want them an even distance and at the same angle. Then you're gonna switch and go the opposite direction. And again, like, like I said, sometimes it's easier for me to paint in one direction versus the other. So I'm gonna turn it and go this way. And basically, I don't know if you can see this, you're making little squares. But when you look at it straight on, you've got little diamonds. But your little spaces should be, should be sort of square. And then you can go back and add some more detail to that in the form of... There's lots of ways to make dots. I, I a lot of times will just make them with the end of my liner brush, as long as the paint's fresh and dot in those, the center of those squares or diamonds. And there's a, you know, a pretty little flower center. We could go on with this flower to add some more detail and say we wanted to add some comma strokes to this 
these petals. So we could start out here. And just pull some comma strokes on each side. And that's why it's important to learn to do them in both directions, so. Maybe we add, this is another little thing that I do. It's, it's again, I'm using a round brush. This is a number four. But learning to do these little oval presses, you just are pressing the tip of the brush down and lifting. And they're dots, but they're more of an oval shape. And they make good little again, fillers. They, they're good at the bottom of a, a flower. Good for little top tops of flowers. So I think we've covered all the basic strokes we've done. Go back to our little worksheets here. We've done comma strokes in a solid color. We've overstroked them with a lighter. Added some multiple strokes, comma strokes, and a larger stroke. We've done some comma strokes where we've double loaded the brush and with two different colors to give some variations. We've done S strokes, uh, some with just one color, some that we've done two colors, and then showed how you can put them together continuously to form like ribbon border shapes. Or you can do them, this one's like a vertical one that makes a ribbon shape. And you can create simple leaves from those S strokes by just doing basic little liner detail outlining and some little liner strokes within the leaf. We've done a C stroke, and again, you need to, those are done with a flat brush, and you need to learn to do them in either direction. You can do them by side loading, multi loading the brush with a couple different colors. And we've done little scrolls, scrolls that you can do, use for borders or just little, um, they're really good for like grapevine wreaths, adding little tendrils out of garlands or grapevine wreath shapes. Uh, we've made a simple tulip folk art flower using scrolls and comma strokes, some cross hatching and little oval dots. And we did a little folk art rose using a scroll stroke in over a base color and then used S strokes for leaves and then did some detailed outlining. So I hope you'll practice these and attempt the little bloom frame that's one of the projects in the club. This is, a, again, just a good little simple practice piece for doing the basic strokes and line work and dots. And it makes a pretty little frame for a picture or in my case I just did a little insert in it out of cardstock and painted it and put a some little lettering. These little frames are you know I've gotten these at Michaels and they're I think a dollar a piece. They don't cost much of anything but they would make a real pretty little gift for someone. I hope you've learned a little bit from this and will practice your strokes. I will put in a little worksheet that you can download with the video with the basic stroke shapes and some little simple designs that you could use to create from them.